Hey, it's Tom from Pack Hacker, and in this video, we are taking a detailed look at the Code of Bell cross case, which I've been testing for the last two weeks. So let's dive in. All right, so kicking it off, there is a lot going on with this bag. We have the X-Pack material on the outside, um, ballistic up here at the top. I've seen uh, YKK zippers. We also have some Hypalon rubbery pull points and grab points. And then we have Fidlock as well in areas like this magnetic strap right here. So if you don't know much about Coda Bell, they always have just a ton of stuff going on, a ton of different materials and a ton of different functionality. So this one might be kind of long, so let's buckle up. And speaking of buckle up, I'm gonna buckle in this strap that fell off. So I've got some stuff to say about the straps. Um, but first of all, I just wanna talk about the three carry modes that this bag has to offer. So there is this shoulder strap here, which is pretty adjustable. So you just, you know, throw that on like this. I enjoyed carrying it like this. I think it's very structured. It's got a good amount of feel like this. I think my favorite way to carry this uh, was in backpack mode as this other, <laughs> so I'm gonna bring this back up for you because the strap fell off again. Um, so definitely, you know, briefcase mode is a challenge, but I, I did enjoy carrying it this style in briefcase mode, um, just, you know, not for too long of distances, but I think this is really nice. It's got a nice feel to it as uh, my mic fell off my pants there. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> so I think this had like a good feel to it when it's in briefcase mode. And then there's also backpack mode, which the straps are stowed behind this part. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, but let's talk about the way that these function. So Briefcase mode, you have two straps here. Code of Bell on their site says that you can tighten the side of this to prevent the dangling handle when it's not in use, but you still have this dangly piece right here. So I've been, you know, you can maybe kind of weave it in between this Hypalon webbing they have here. Also doubles as another handle. Some of the times I just carry it by this. If I'm not going too far, it's just a little bit easier. You don't have to get the handles together and it block the unzipping of the top here. So, you know, I don't know, there's just this strap hanging out. You can't really put it anywhere except for maybe weave it under this a couple times, uh, which I don't think looks very clean. However, on the opposite side, you have those magnets, which you've seen can come off. So those pull off um, just like that, or you can stow this, which is what I did most of the time, inside of this Velcro portion here. Now, one of the things that I really dislike about this, and I almost lost in the first day, uh, is this handle. So for some reason it has snap fasteners and Velcro. So when you fold it over and attach it, it, it uh, stays together. I never really figured out <laughs> how to get the Velcro and snap fastener to fasten. You can if you're like really careful. Um, but I guess if you do this, if you get that on the side and fasten it down, you're just gonna wanna pretty much have it on there. And uh, there we go, I got the fastener in. That one's not in, struggling. There we go, okay, you get the point. So I'm not sure if this is designed to stay on here like this and you're just supposed to carry it with both handles because one of the, the odd things with this that I've seen on other bags is this isn't attached to this strap at all. So a lot of the times this padded portion will be attached to this strap, but there's no real way to do that. So, you know, at first I was like, all right, well, I'll just like put it here and then fasten it down. And then when I want to access the bag, I actually have to take this off, open it up, make sure this doesn't fall off. The first time I was using it, this just fell onto the floor and I was like, all right. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it's more so keep it fastened on this side and then never really connect these two which again, won't really obstruct your access either. So that's a pro. A con is that it's two pieces flapping around instead of one uh, when you have this thing, when you're carrying it. 
Um, so I'm just going to remove this strap for now so I can make sure to show you backpack mode. So I'm going to remove this, set it off to the side, and then I'm going to tighten this one up a little bit. Maybe just get the excess strap out of the way there. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then we have some hypo on here, which is nice little for, for, it's like a rubbery feel for, for grabs, or if you want to attach some accessories and then actually, uh, let's move on to the shoulder strap next. Um, so you have a singular shoulder strap, really padded, like super comfortable shoulder strap. I love that there's a big padded target here. I think that's really great. And then there's also, you know, just a lot going on here. So this can Velcro on and off. So if you just want to have it with just a nylon strap, you can do that. And then of course there's webbing here. There's a, a D ring here. If you want to attach some additional code of bell accessories, like I think they were doing a free gift with purchase the other day. That was like this little tiny pouch, like for your pouch or for your sling. So they just like love these little organizational pieces. I think in this bag, a lot of the times it, it manifests as overkill with the three carry modes but I did enjoy carrying it this way and um, it stays out of the way nicely. Big Fidlock buckle here too, so that's magnetic. You just pull this piece and that can come apart. Uh, so up to you, you know, whether or not you, you wanna take it apart or just sling this on. I'm a big fan of just slinging it on. You know, there's a pull tab here to get that off quite easily and then we have elastic strap keeper here which I kind of wish was on this top handle part too, just to manage that a little bit. And uh, funny quick thing, so I have never been a fan of dangling straps and Kurt in our Packhacker Pro community just wrote a really big story on uh, why he favors straps and the reasons that he loves them. So if you're a pro member, I would strongly encourage you to go check that out. And I love that everyone can kind of, you know, bags are so subjective. Everyone can kind of bring their own opinion into the mix and whatever they like, uh, you know, is correct. So. I'm not a big fan of dangling straps. Kurt and Pack Hacker Pro loves them. So I dig, we have a lot of different perspectives going on in the community. Um, but for me, it's just a little too much. And uh, okay, so we went over that strap, perfect. We went over this top handle, perfect. Let me remove this strap too. I've actually been stowing it on the side here. Um, so it's permanently attached on this side. And then what I've been doing when I'm not using it is just folding it up and putting it in here. And we can see that we have a little peak of that orange liner. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to kind of fold this bit in half. And there we go, nicely managed strap. You can see that it just cleans it up so much in the back there, which I dig. That's nice. Um, okay, let's talk about backpack carry too. Backpack carry, the straps come out from the back here. There's a snap fastener here, which is nice that you can take that apart with and keep that closed. One of the little details that I love here is that there's this little loop behind the snap fastener. So I can actually get my finger behind that and fasten it in. And that's really nice because a lot of the times if that's not there, you're kind of pushing against the bag and it's hard to get that leverage. But if you put your finger in there, it's a lot easier to snap. And I'm trying to show you here on camera too. So it's a little challenging but you get the picture, you just squeeze it together and it goes together. Handle at the top so you can carry it from the top while it's in backpack mode. Let me just pull these straps out. Um, despite this thing being so boxy, it actually is quite comfortable. And uh, I think a lot of that's just due to, I really love this, when this top part when it, the padded portion isn't actually connected to the bag. I think that's really comfortable. It allows the bag to flex around a little bit on your back. All right, so let's strap these in. We have ITW Wujin buckles here. So let's just bam, clip that in, flip it over, and then we'll clip this in as well. So some nice padding there. We have some nice breathable mesh pattern. There's these little holes going across. And again, I found this bag comfortable. We have an adjustable sternum strap with again, that snap fastener Velcro combo, elastic strap keeper there, similar on the other side. So you can adjust this to the height that you need on these small pieces of webbing here. And then we have this hip strap down at the bottom, stabilizer strap. So 
One of the things that I noticed with this in testing is that this actually came off one time. I've had gatekeeper buckles like this come off in the past, but a lot of the times it's been when a gatekeeper is on this actual shoulder strap itself. So I actually, you know, was pulling this out of a car and uh, this part had somehow popped off and it was just like sitting on the street. So I don't love that. One of the things I noticed is that the uh, clip, I mean, this one is just off too. I didn't even really do anything you can see there. So uh, I really dislike that. I mean, I probably wouldn't use this anyways for a bag of this size or I'd want something a little bit more like an actual hip belt. But I did notice that these clips were on opposite sides. So you have one on the top here and the bottom here. And I was gonna say that this is the only side that came off, but now I just saw this side come off too. So <laughs> I don't know if you, you know, if you get this, just be careful. Maybe you don't have this on unless you really need it. Um, Cause that can pop off automatically there. At least that's what I noticed in the testing phase. Two clips here as well. So no elastic keepers on the bottom, but we have a plastic clip here to help keep that excess strap in place. So I like that. And overall, it's just a lot of straps. Um, I am going to quickly put this on for you, but before I do, very nice padding back here on the back panel. Nice padded handle too, so if you want to carry it, you can. And then this uh, part as well, I mean padded uh, luggage pass-through too, if you can get that through your luggage. And then there's almost this little pocket here in the back uh, so that you can stow in these straps. I suppose if you wanted to, you could also shove the, um, the crossbody strap in the back here as well, but I just kind of like it in that side pocket because it act actually goes near where, where it should go. Um, I mean, you, you, you could shove it in there. It is just a little bit weird though, so. Okay, so let's check this thing out in backpack mode. I enjoy that it's structured. I like that it's boxy, I don't mind that. So if I throw it on like this, you can see how it fits me little buckle here to keep things secure. And then we have this waist strap down here at the bottom. For me at 6'2", here's where the top of my hips are. So this comes up quite a bit higher. Uh, my belly button's here, so it actually goes above my belly button. So not the best fit for me in terms of the waist strap, but it feels super comfortable. I really like the way that this bag wears. And again, I think it's that nylon piece at the top that I showed a little bit earlier that really allows this thing to contour to you, um, just depending on the size and shape of your body. So that covers it in backpack mode. All right, let's get into the rest of the exterior features because there is still a good amount to cover. So one of the other things that I like, Code of Bell, they really have a focus on integrating this with the rest of their ecosystem. So we have the annex case on this side attached with plastic clips. You can put the Annex liner on the front here. You can attach with plastic clips. So I had it for a week. I was using this on the front. For a week, uh, I, I had it off. And then we have the Annex carrier, which you can fasten at the at one of the sides here. So you can fasten it onto this webbing here with these plastic clips. And one of the things that was challenging with this, really love this thing, by the way, the Annex carrier. Um, one of the challenging things with this was you don't really know, <laughs> like you, you kind of like put things on the outside of this thing depending on the orientation and the style you're carrying it in. So one of the things that I showed you in briefcase mode with the annex case here, I just wanted to have this on for the start of the video. You can actually see it's at the bottom when we're in briefcase mode. So this is the main way to access and don't really love that because it doesn't stand up straight. So I'm going to pull this off for you. I mean, this too, you could attach it to any side you wanted with where, where there's webbing. I mean, could attach it to the top part too in this hypalon. But I wanna show you how these clips work. So let's go ahead and just pull these off. They're these little buttons that you can push and then you just pull them off and the clip can just come through that webbing too. But you can see where that was attached. Um, I, you know, there's so many pockets going on in this thing and so much space on the inside that like if you need the extra exterior space you can go for it but there's already so many straps going on and things like that i just found it kind of overwhelming to use it in that way and then if you're carrying it in briefcase mode i mean you can see how nice that is now nice and stable there's a good base so 
You know, if it's briefcase mode, you set it down like this. You probably don't want anything on the bottom. If you're in backpack mode and you want to set it down like that, you probably don't want anything at the bottom either. So you're limited based on how you want to carry it, unless you just want to deal with setting it down a specific way. So I did really enjoy that. Um, let's get on now to this front area. So this, I'm going to cover this a little bit more in detail, but this is a huge fabric gussy here, allows us to expand based on what you put inside. And then we have these two exterior straps. Again, this is where the Annex liner would fasten to. So there's webbing on the back here. You use those plastic clips and you fasten it onto these um, rails here. Again, those three accessories I just showed you, those are all sold separately. So the cross case um, just comes just as you see it here without the additional accessories. Uh, so these come off. I mean, you can strap things to it as well. Like if you wanted to put like a jacket in here and kind of hang it over, you could do that too. And then if you have like a jacket inside of this pocket here, you can use these to compress down that pocket. Uh, we have some G hooks down here at the bottom. These appear to be a aluminum, very lightweight, nice in the hand. Those can pull off at any time. Plastic strap keepers here. Um, I like the elastic a little bit better in this area because this tends to get knocked around and falls out quite easily. So that's just something to note and consider. And then we have these just buckles up here at the top. Looks like I see WJ for Wu Jin. Good stuff there. Another G hook at the top. So like, man, I count how many times I say G hook or buckle in this video. It's going to be quite a bit. Um, zipper pulls are nice. They're Hypalon. Code of Bell uses this design for a lot of their uh, other accessories in their bags, and I do really enjoy it. It's really grippy. It's easy to grab. It's nice. We got the YKK zippers too. Looks like this one's a reverse coil. And you can see there that the gusset just got caught in the zipper. So that's not great, but there we go. Easily tweaked. All right, and then we have strap keeper here again for this. If you like unbuckle this, you can really expand this front part but I'm gonna put that back for now. We'll cover more of that once we get in, inside of the main part of the pack. Uh, Fidlock portion of that waist strap or shoulder strap hanging off here. So I'm just gonna stuff that in there to get it out of the way. Again, that webbing to attach stuff here. The opposite side is pretty much mirrored. We got a buckle, we can pull this down to compress it. And then we've got webbing here at the top as well. And then at the bottom, we have more webbing and you have even more bottom straps here as well. So if you wanted to like stick a yoga mat here you could or like something else that's cylindrical keep in mind whatever you put here whatever you put on the bottom again you're just gonna have to deal with it you know not standing up so that was one of the things i ran into with the annex case on the bottom set it down kind of be wobbly same goes for yoga mat or anything else that you attach and i think that covers the outside of the bag so let's pop in i guess i mean i could talk about this too there are d-rings up at the top here just for attaching additional things that you may want to. And again, like so many little details and secrets with this bag. So let's pop in and check out the interior of this bag as well. Okay, pocket time. So let's start out here with the top pocket here. We have a YKK AquaGuard zip going across. It is self-locking as well, which is nice. It gives it a nice low profile. And then we have some grippy Hypalon zipper garage up there at the end. Gonna hold that up for you. That'll help prevent moisture from getting inside. Um, this has a nice, soft, felty feel on the inside. So if you have glasses, you can toss them in there. I've been keeping like my wallet and my AirPods in here. I think it works pretty well for that. Dimensions of the pocket are like this. Now this pocket is pretty flat, but it's out of the crush zone as Bellroy likes to call it and it's also RFID protected. So good place for like, you know, your wallet, electronics, maybe even your glasses if they lay flat enough. I usually like putting my glasses in a case. Your mileage may vary. All right, so that covers that pocket. I'm like waiting to get us into the main one on the inside. So let's talk about this exterior pocket here. And Code of Bell does this a lot. I think it's a really interesting solve to give your bag additional capacity when you need it. But when you don't, it lies pretty flat. So I did throw a jacket in here uh, just in between these two sections of the video. And I just want to show you how big this pocket can get. 
So if I unclip everything, I mean, you just have a ton of extra volume here. The thing's gonna look weird, right? If you're carrying it next to you and it's just sticking out and super full. However, you do have a ton of extra space. So this unzips. I've got a puffer jacket in there. This is a Canada Goose. I believe it's the Highbridge Light, um, but that's inside. So, you know, pretty compact jacket, but you could probably fit a pretty big size jacket in here too. And then on the bottom, you have some uh, additional options for organization. So we have a very robust key clip here. This is from YKK. So you just put your keys like that if you wanna attach them. And those just hang out on the leash there. For me, I mean, you can also access this pocket from the top. So if you're holding this next to you in briefcase mode, access this pocket from the top, bring your keys out. You can get nice quick access to them. However, I, I, I just don't love that. I, I more would like keep the keys in my pocket. I think it's a little bit faster, um, but you do have that option should you like to do it. YKK AquaGuard zipper up here on the top, good for weather resistance. You know, not the best for lasting a long time. I know YKK AquaGuards, a lot of people complain about them breaking down more quickly than like regular reverse coil zippers. So that's something to note. And then you also have two sliders here. So that's nice if you just wanna like sneak your keys out, you know, you got them, grab them out there and you're good to go. Close that back off. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the organization in here as well. So you've got, that's the zipper coil there on the top that I just went into right here to get access to it. You have two zip pockets on the sides that are also gusseted. So I've just got a pair of sunglasses in here. Gonna set that off to the side for now. But these are gusseted or there's like room at the bottom. These can expand if you need it. So it's not like a little thin liner pocket. It does have expanding capabilities because of the space below here. So those just kind of hang out. It's nice to have that option. Not everything is locked in. And then at the bottom here, we have like a stretchy, a big stretchy mesh pocket. I'm gonna try to open this way up for you so you can see big stretchy mesh pocket down there at the bottom. So if you wanna stick things inside, you can definitely do that. Uh, that are, you know, maybe like a hat and a gloves is good in here because this is gonna pull it down a little bit. So clothing, anything like that, that can kind of be compressed down a bit and kept tidy in here, that's gonna be a good option for you. And then there's some Velcro down here at the bottom. That's just for uh, some foam that's on the side. So that'll just give it a little bit more structure. Not really supposed to access that when you're using it. However, just note that it is there. So that covers this big gigantic pocket. And then I do really like the design. You just close it open, close it up like that. And it kind of folds over a lot of air in there, right? And you can get it really flat to the bag. You can clip both of these sides back in. So there we go. And then I'll show you me doing this side. Some Wujin buckles there again, clip that in. And you can, I mean, really just crank it down. If you want low profile look, have this fold up like that. There's also a pocket out here on the front, which again, in briefcase orientation is going to be sideways, but in backpack orientation, it is going to be from the top down. So if we just open that up and take a look inside, pretty simple pocket out here on the back and it goes down to about here. So you got some pretty good space in there as well. My hand is stuck, <laughs> so I'm gonna pull that out. Um, so just know that, I mean, if you're putting like really small things down at the bottom and you have hands the size of mine, your hand might get stuck in there. You might have to like pour something out. Uh, but if you have something like, you know, again, with a little bit of size to it, even like another pouch, you could toss that down the bottom. There. Okay, so that covers that pocket. Right, we covered that. I do wanna talk a little bit about the laptop capability of this bag. Um, so let's, grab this nice little Hypalon pull tab here. And again, I think if you'd like, you can kind of thread through your Hypalon zipper pull through this hole and give it a little bit of security as well. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. There you go. So if you wanna give your bag a little bit of security, you can do that, thread the Hypalon zip through. It's just harder, a little harder to get access to. 
And uh, Coda Bell does some really interesting things with how they secure their zippers. So there's more in store with that as well. Uh, on a lot, of the, a lot of their products handle security in interesting ways. So that's a nice little deterrent there. Um, and you can, you know, put these like together as well. And there's just a lot of good stuff going on. So let's open this up. And again, this is where I kind of start to get qualms with this thing. I start to get qualms with a lot of bags like this when it's like a brief and a messenger and a backpack. There's just so many options for how to carry this thing. Again, I liked it in brief because you set it down, unzip the top, you flip it open, and you have access to everything inside. But if it's in backpack mode, you set it down this way and then you open it up and it's kind of sideways. So it's just, I think it's, it's good to do that. There's a zippered laptop compartment in the back that I want to show you real quick. Um, but this is a laptop compartment here. So this is seemingly made of Hypalon. It's a nice rubbery feel to it. I think the Fidlock is kind of overkill. And, and one of the things that I, problems that I have with this is there's like so much going on just in this very thin area that I found it hard to utilize everything. And that starts with the laptop case. So in order to get this undone, you have to pull it down and pull it over. It's this Fidlock magnet, very popular on some of these uh, kind of more technical brands products. That's right there. I, I found this hard to use. Uh, it's just, it's a lot. I don't think it's really needed. And if you have like this part filled to the brim, you kind of have to maneuver this in between pouches to get it back down. I found that to be overkill. Let me pull my laptop out. There's some like, there's some structure on this thing. So there's like this tab that goes up and nice padding here. Um, kind of like a love-hate relationship with this laptop area. Close that up. However, let me close this too because I want to show you the back laptop portion. This is a 16-inch MacBook Pro that I have right here. So I'm going to slide that down to the bottom. Let me unzip the YKK zipper. And again, it's AquaGuard. We have that zipper garage there. Code of Bell, just like every little technical detail you can think of it's likely gonna be on this bag. So we have the Hypalon zipper garage right here, the YKK AquaGuard zip, and that goes across the side. 16 inch MacBook Pro here, let me throw that in. I found this to be kind of hard to put into this quickly. So if you can see it, there's a separate Velcro pouch here that goes down to the very bottom. So if you have documents or something you want to put in there, I mean, this is basically a document sleeve, but if I wanted to keep more room in the main compartment, I want to throw my laptop here. You kind of have to get it above that Velcroed portion that I just showed you in order to get it inside. Once you get it inside, you can zip it and it's good and it's in there, but pulling it out and putting it in has proven to be more slow than using it in this briefcase mode. I think it's a lot better here Again, best in briefcase mode, if you set it on like this, backpack mode, a little different. MacBook Pro 16 inch, let me just set that down to the side. Let's get a look at everything going on inside of this bag. So the top portion here, you have these stretchy mesh pockets. I really like these, you know, they, they flip right out, you have access to them. I've got Passport on this side, and then I've got a Apple Watch charger on the other side. You have some nice stretch to them so you can see again I like that they're considering like pieces of different sizes that can be going into these pockets I think that's a really big plus because some of the times when it's just this liner material it can be a little stiff and inflexible there's also there are also pockets underneath here so again <laughs> depending on if you're carrying this in backpack mode if you slide something in there and it's always up, it'll stay in there just nicely. Otherwise, if you wanna just hide something discreet behind it that's lighter weight, maybe it won't fly out of that pocket. Air slim pouch in here. Got a hoodie just in the main area. Small Heim Planet packing cube. Set these all to the side for now. And you can see the space here really start to take shape. So this is what I'm talking about, laptop stand. This is what I'm talking about when I think it's just a little bit too much in this space. You've got the laptop compartment on one side, which comes out quite a bit if you have that laptop in there, even the slim 16 inch MacBook Pro. You've got a total of like that much space down below 
Um, I don't know how big that is. Looks like maybe six inches on the inside, maybe a little less. And it'll flex some, but you have like six inches and then you have pockets that have some shape to them as well. So if these are filled up, I just threw in those extra clips here for now, just to attach those exterior accessories. But if you have this filled up and these are really bowing out and you wanna access something, but you have that packing cube in here, let me just grab it. I mean, you're kind of you're kind of fighting with it, right? So you're you got your laptop in your packing cube. You're going around. You're kind of grabbing down here, pulling it open. The packing cube is here, so it's kind of fighting against each other in that main compartment. And it just feels like a lot is going on in this area. But yeah, those two little Velcro pockets are nice. Again, orange interior, easy to see everything that's going on inside. And then we have another uh, mesh pocket down here at the bottom. So I've just got some thinner items. I do like the sizing of the pocketing that they offer in this bag. And then I've got notebook in here. So that goes down pretty much all the way. This zippered pocket, little fluff there. Hello, little buddy. A uh, little orange loose thread there floating around. This is what I'm talking about with the liner pockets. It's nice to have these in a combination, but I like that these top pockets are stretchy because these liner pockets don't stretch out at all. So this is good for flatter items. You have a little notebook, passport, go in there, pens, pencils, things of that nature. And then you have, I mean, these are for pens and pencils, actually, these little side pockets. So these go in and go to the back. Opening up this top Velcro too. This is gonna be a good place to store uh, little memory cards or little tiny tech dongles, things of that nature, um, like SD cards for your camera, things like that. So there's one, two, three, four little pockets that are going to be there. And then we have a water bottle pocket on the side here. Uh, this is a little cord that allows you to lock it into place. Put that in, I have an 18 ounce hydro flask inside of here. And this is primarily where I kept that little briefcase handle. So you saw earlier on in the video, it fell off quite a bit of these magnet things. I would take it off of here and just store it on this side area right there when I wasn't using it because I was so afraid that I was gonna lose it. Um, and I almost did. All right. So I think that about wraps us up. The Code of Bell cross case. Thank you for keeping me here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.